Members of the Parliament of Jubaland, that is a, a semi-autonomous state in southern Somalia, voted to elect their president. Incumbent President Ahmed Madobe prevailed with 56 of Jubaland's 74 MPs casting ballots. But his rival also claimed victory in the election, which the federal government in Mogadishu had vowed not to recognize. The re-election of Jubaland's President Sheikh Ahmed Islam Madobe is a major setback for President Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo's efforts to gain control over Somalia's federal state and establish a strong central government. Sheikh Madobe won a second term by garnering 56 of the 74 votes cast by members of parliament, as I've mentioned, despite the strong opposition from Mogadishu, backed by Ethiopia. This means that out of the five regional states that suspended cooperation with Mogadishu in September 2018, President Farmajo has only regained Southwest and Hir Shabele, Jubiland, that is also Gal Mudug and Patland, remaining out of his reach, at least for now. So we want to see how does this pretend and where was their flash of interest on what is happening in Jubaland, and of course we want to throw this to a panelist as well to just tell us more about this. Uh, the center of controversy also is between uh, Ethiopia as well, also Kenya is also embroiled in this because it has interest on this particular uh, tiny land in Somalia as well. So let's just begin with uh, Dr. Hassan Kanenja. The center of electoral controversy is the relationship also between Jubaland, the capital of which is uh, uh, the critical port of Kismayo and the federal government in Mogadishu bring us up to speed. There's been tensions between uh, Jubaland and Mogadishu for some time now. It's actually not new. Uh, it's been festering for a while and there have been little efforts to try and bridge that divide. Now, of course, uh, the causes are both historical, political and geostrategic. I think one thing that's been complicating all this is also the presence, you know, you have uh, external players and a number of countries in the region and outside that actually have an interest in that. And there's been, I would say, a relative failure actually by Mogadishu to try and reach out to regions in good time and try to make peace. Uh, the constitution of, um, of Somalia allows a degree of autonomy uh, for those regional states, including even conducting elections. And when you recognize that uh, you, your constitution has given or has granted regions a certain autonomy, it's incumbent upon you to try and find a way of working with them. Now, uh, I wouldn't say this is a blow because had Madobe lost, there would be actually other challenges mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jubaland was also going to face. I think what we need to do going forward right now is Mogadishu and Jubaland and other, indeed other states, need to find a way of working together. Now, uh, in the course of this program, we're going to discuss some of those things deeply with regard to some of the external interests and how they're actually fueling instability, not just in the region, but also in Somalia. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so politically, it may look like a blow, and it is, it's indeed a blow, but increasingly, uh, Farmajo has been fairly isolated, and in part because he has very limited control. You have uh, powers, including some Middle Eastern powers, striking deals with regional, for instance, you know, uh, states, uh, to the detriment of actually uh, uh, stability and uh, functionality of the, of the central government. And, we, you know, we are likely to see this thing perhaps go on for some time, unless as Somalis themselves and as the region, we actually wake up to the realization that, you know, Somalia cannot be balkanized. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to find a way of making sure it's in our national interest. Right. The long-term stability of Somalia is in the, lo in, uh, in the national interest, interest of Kenya, Kenya. Yeah, Ethiopia, and the entire region. And so even though uh, we have allies, for instance, within Somalia, and we have friends, and historically, for instance, in Jubaland, uh, Jubaland has very, uh, uh, long historical ties with Kenya, but also the most recent history with regard to, let's say, the role played by the Raskamboni Brigade mm. in trying to liberate Kismayu. Of course, it's of so strategic importance to us. We have a men and women under AMISO, you know, depleted in, in that area. And so it's important that it's stable. But then for us to succeed and for the region to succeed, ultimately, the, uh, the Jubaland and the national government has to find a way of actually working with the regions 
uh, working with Puntland and other regions because it's not just jubilant. Now, if it cannot do that, then they can as well even forget the idea of reuniting with Somaliland, which has been perhaps the most peaceful part of Somalia yes. for the longest and uh, you know, fairly autonomous. And so, I th personally, I'll put the challenge first to the central government of Somalia to try and reach out, but second, for the regional states to actually be willing to know that they live in one Somalia and there's no other country. And it's unlikely that these other regions or uh, disparate regions are going to be recognized as independent Correct. states in time soon. Mm -hmm. Part of it because of the African philosophy, Correct. what the region believes, and the international community believes Somalia should be one. You have um, been quoted as saying, of course, we're looking at stability. This is three-pronged uh, approach that you're looking at, the stability, the Kenyan relations, uh, relations with Somalia, and uh, also um, I forget the other one. Maybe you can actually just bring me up to speed as far uh, as this is concerned. And also talk about the international interest as well, because we, we can see the United Nations uh, Special uh, Representative for Somalia, that is uh, Jem uh, Swan, yep. also personally met with Sheikh Madobe uh, for talks on an inclusive election. Uh, which made also Jubaland Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, that is JIPEC, also extend the registration uh, by 72 hours as well. So there, there's a lot of interest that we can see around, uh, not only just uh, from, uh, uh, from 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 uh, the UN, also we can see from Qatar, from other uh, countries as well, as far as uh, you know, uh, the elections of Jubaland is concerned. Bring us up to speed. Yeah, Dibal. The stability of Somalia is going to depend uh, to, number one, how, first of all, the government in Mogadishu is going to make itself attractive to regional states. Now, if you can barely control your city, it's going to be very uh, hard for you to convince the rest that you can actually be able to restore order in the whole country. Yeah. Now, this is, has been complicated by the uh, persistent, you know, uh, clanism in which, of course, uh, a lot of uh, Somali politicians see, view politics in Somalia. And as long as that stays, it becomes challenging. Now, to make matters worse, now, I appreciate that Washington could have, a, you know, uh, perhaps a word of advice, you know, for Kenya. You know, the, the trouble is they don't live in this region. Yep. We do. And uh, n not at any time has Nairobi advised Washington how they should deal with immigrants, you know, on the southern border. <laughs> so I'm not really expecting them to continue doing that. Um, we have our own views, but we kind of keep them, you know, to ourselves <laughs> as, as Nairobi, <laughs> so far that concerned. But I think one thing that is important, uh, you know, for us and uh, what I was hoping be a subject is the role of external players. It's not just in the funding, the divisions within Somalia, but including uh, the current uh, dispute we're having with Somalia. Uh, it's, it's not just that it's organic to Somalia, you actually have a lot of external players. And uh, you know, that because in, uh, of uh, the recognition of the external interests and how they're really making life difficult, not just for Somalis, but for Kenyans and everybody else in the region, you know, the Hon Institute uh, decided to do a study called Flirting with Hyenas, how external interests are fueling stability yeah, in, in the Horn of Africa and discusses, looks at a number of countries, both from the region, from the Middle East, from Europe, and from Asia. As we speak today, there are several military bases in Djibouti, in Djibouti mm -hmm. you know, by foreign countries. Uh, within Somalia, you have certain Gulf states supporting the central government, others are supporting the regional states. Yeah. And to the extent where they're actually establishing pacts with regional states, for instance. That makes it virtually impossible. Yeah. And that is not in, a, in, a, in, a, in Kenya's national interest. And yeah. so as a region, we should be able to actually highlight these issues because we can work so hard to try and bring Somalis together. Yeah. But as long as these other external interests, which include countries and companies, mm -hmm. you know, exploration companies for oil, for energy, and for other resources, is going to be virtually impossible for us to succeed. And what I'm hoping is in the next few minutes we can actually be able to delve deeper uh, into what this report is actually talking about, plus other ideas that we may have. And I know a lot of Kenyans are interested to actually know what is going on, yes. because people wonder, why can't we fix Somalia? Yeah. Why is the conflict between Kenya and Somalia getting so bad and out of hand? Yeah. It's because largely of some of these interests, and I would like my colleagues perhaps you know, to, uh, to, to say a little bit about that.